if I'm comfortable, I know it's not, probably not going to work out. I kind of had to get okay with being uncomfortable. Damn it. Curses. I am Hugh Jackman, and I'm going to be talking through a few of the clips from my latest movie, The Sun, for British Esquire. It was under his mattress. Sorry. Thought I'd better tell you. This is a really difficult scene for my character because things are starting to feel optimistic um, with his son, uh, Nicholas, who's, been su who's suffering from acute depression, hasn't been going to school, uh, has now decided to come and live with me instead of his mother. Uh, we split two years ago. So he's decided to come and live with us and it makes my character very happy because he wants to repair any damage from the divorce and he wants to be there for his son and he feels that he can be the one to really help his son through this. And I, I, I don't understand it. I mean, he seems to be doing well, doesn't he? he he's going to school, he's smiling, he's, he's better. Yes. So why is he doing this? In this scene, his new wife, played by Vanessa Kirby, has just discovered a knife under his bed. And it all feels very confounding to my character because things seem to be going much better. And I think what is beautiful about the scene and the way it's shot is how restrained Vanessa is. You feel all her fear and doubt and worry, but she doesn't want to overburden the situation. And the fact she's holding our baby, this innocent, beautiful little baby, it's just, a, I think, a reminder to the audience of who we are naturally underneath, this just curious, open child. There's something about this script, I could count on one hand the amount of times I've felt an urgency to play a part, like an absolute, I need to play this part. Um, and I didn't think I was gonna be able to get it because I heard the director was talking with a couple of other actors. So it was frustrating for a while because I was like, ah, oh, this is my part, I can feel it, I know how to play it. This is a story I think needs to be told. These are conversations around mental health that we need to have urgently, uh, I think particularly post pandemic. And so I was dying to do it, thankfully. <laughs> The director was not talking to any other actor and uh, answered my email where I basically said I want to play it. I just, I was not a very good poker player at all. I just laid it all out there and he said yes. We all became very close because Florian didn't want to rehearse. He wanted it to feel real and raw and immediate and unplanned, a little messy. And particularly with Zen, he was 19. He's playing a 17 year old, but he was 19. But it was really his first film and he's from Melbourne which I've lived in for many years, and he came over, and because of COVID, he wasn't allowed to go out and do anything. So he was there with his father, um, living in a house and coming to set. So when we were together, we spent a lot of time together. I had my family with me. We were in a COVID bubble when we were shooting, thankfully, because it was, they were very intense scenes, and I longed to be with them when I got home. I think you'll have the experience watching the film. You'll want to go home and hug your kids and talk to your kids, and. It really helped me, but I did find it hard to separate. I was, I think the movie opened up in me some vulnerabilities and um, some pain as well. And it was hard to turn off. And I found myself having a lot of dreams and for the first time in my life having sleeplessness, you know, some troubles with sleep. My father passed away during the film as well. So it was a very emotional time and Thankfully, the part and the director just allowed me to go with whatever I was feeling. Um, but I was super grateful to have my family with me. How is that any of your business? I have the right to reinvent my life. Fuck, it's my life, you hear me? It is my life! Just prior to this clip, I found out my son hasn't been going to school and lying and, and just for a long time, just pretending and never going. And so my fear as a father, my worry, very quickly turns into anger um, because I'm feeling out of control and I'm feeling like I have to be in charge here and if this kid doesn't listen to me, I'm, gonna, I'm terrified what might happen if I lose control here. And what that sparks in my son ultimately is him fighting back. I find this scene really hard to watch um, because uh, you have to become a parent to understand it. I'm a, I, I can't remember how, losing my temper. I know I play Wolverine, there's all that rage, but in life I'm not that kind of person. I don't lose 
my temper that much at all. I have had moments as a parent where you, they can push buttons in you more than anyone. And it somehow touches, and that's what this scene is to me and why I find it hard to watch. I believe, and it's part of the film, whether we like it or not, we're this bridge between generations. So when I was brought up, the common thing was, come on, get on with it, man up. There was certainly an idea of boys need to be made into men. Stop crying. Uh, 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 don't do that. Don't be a coward. All these things you had to make it. And there was a, a kind of harshness, like, come on, get on with it. And all that stuff you can I can, or my character, is consciously saying, I am not going to do that with my kid. I am going to, and by the way, every parent on the planet does this deal with themselves. They're, they're going to look back and go, that was really great for my upbringing. I'm going to do that. And this was not great. I'm not going to do that. In this film, it does a really good job of my character, who was abandoned, had a very harsh, tough father played by Anthony Hopkins, cruel in a way. You see him actively thinking, no, I'm gonna be there for my son. I'm gonna be able to, he can be able to talk to me. I'm gonna support him. But you also, underneath that, you feel him just saying, come on, I think I'm meant to push him here. If I don't push him, he'll never make it. He'll never, life is hard. He's gotta to be told, I've gotta to make him into a man. All these things are operating underneath. And you're absolutely right. I think younger generations, and I see it at work, I see it everywhere, they don't operate by the same rules. They don't have that same feeling of this is the way to be a man or this is the only way to get through life. Uh, I think they're way more open and okay with it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, Beth, um, sorry, Kate's just here to talk to me about um, Nicholas. We've just found out he hasn't been going to school for almost a month. It's not only that, Peter. Oh, this is the first scene of the movie, pretty much. Uh, I, I asked him to... Laura Dern. I don't even remember. She's so amazing. She's got to be something. one of the top and five actors alive today. This is the first scene. There's no rehearsal. She'd arrived the day before. She just turned up. And she's so amazing. It was so much hatred. I thought, I, I thought he was going to... What? You see Vanessa Kirby too, she can't really look, she wants to hear, but she's uncomfortable. All right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go see him tomorrow, I'll swing by at the end of the day. Anyway, it's a, it's a beautiful setup for the movie because you just see what they're up against, not just with the acute depression of the son, but their inability as a team to, to co-parent. We just stayed on set. We didn't, no one went to trailers. We, when we filmed, we filmed, and when we weren't filming, we were sitting there and we were talking with each other and we were sharing things about our lives. And actually, Laura and Vanessa, I think that's the only day they saw each other on set. So uh, I remember as we were promoting the movie, they were like, hi, like they were getting to know each other. But I was lucky enough to have sort of quality time with them both. I was asked to, uh, in an interview not long ago, if there's one moment in your career you could recreate, what would it be? And I said, oh, filming with Anthony Hopkins. Um, it only happened a year and a half ago, but I'll never forget it. He was the first person to arrive on set. He arrived at like 4.30 in the morning. He said he woke up excited at 3.30 and he thought, I'll just get in the car. The locations guy, who was the overnight security guy basically, was there. Nobody else was there. So he just sat there waiting. and. Filming with him, he, he's such a master and he loves it. He's like, a, it's like watching a thoroughbred racehorse. Like he's 83 years old. It's just like, he couldn't wait. And we finished the scene. He turned to the director and said, can I do it again? And he, and he goes, of course. And I said to Florian, I, I pulled him aside while they were sitting on the cameras. I said, why, did, why does he want to go again? It was so brilliant. He goes, I think he just missed acting because of the pandemic. He hadn't acted in 18 months and he missed it. And he was coming in for one day. It was like, we were meant to shoot till seven o'clock. It was 11.30 in the morning. This scene was done because he's that good. So he was like, he knew he had time. And he was like, I want to just give me another go. When I look back at the things, I'm, when I get asked that question, what am I most proud of? Honestly, I don't think of, oh, it's The Great Showman or Wolverine or it's, you know this show or that show or Oklahoma or Boy From What. I, I don't think of that. I think of the things I was most scared of, the things where I followed my gut, 
even when other people are saying, mm -mm. Um, and conversely, the things I'm least proud of are the times where I was talked into something, where I knew in here it wasn't a good idea, but somehow I got talked out of it for whatever reason. They're, they're the hardest things for me to live with, and the things I'm most proud of are the things where I, I went for it. And I, that's what sucks about my job. If I'm comfortable, I know it's probably not gonna work out. I kind of had to get okay with being uncomfortable. Damn it, curses. Thank you so much uh, for watching British Esquire. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk about The Sun. I think it's a movie I'm very, very proud of. I really hope that you get to see it and more importantly that it might spark some conversations with your friends, with your family, at home or at work that you may not have had otherwise. Um, because mental health issues are so vital for us to face, to talk about and and hopefully this movie will spark those conversations amongst you and your family and friends.